If you owned a desktop computer in the early 2000s, there's a very high chance you played an MMO known as RuneScape. The game had a substantial online presence, being showcased on the front pages of popular sites such as Miniclip, YouTube, and Newgrounds. Many people would create a free account to try the game out for themselves. The gameplay in RuneScape was pretty straightforward. Click anywhere on the ground, and your character will walk to that spot. Click on a monster, and your character will begin fighting it. Occasionally you had to click on food to heal, but for the most part you could just sit back and watch your character fight the monster. What most players never got the chance to realize was how complex the combat mechanics actually were in RuneScape. Understanding things like prayer, game ticks, and best in slot equipment would be a must if players wanted to overcome some of RuneScape's harder challenges. The Fire Cape is one of the most iconic items in RuneScape. It was the first item to have an animated texture while wearing it and had unrivaled stat bonuses compared to some of the best capes around at that time. Most best in slot items in RuneScape could be obtained by spending hours earning enough gold to buy them or by completing a sequence of quests. But obtaining the fire cape was a bit different. It could only be earned through an enduring test of skill and persistence. In 2005, Jagex released an update known as the Fight Caves, which brought with it a challenge like no other. Prior to that update, the strongest monster in RuneScape was the Kafite Queen, who had a combat level of 333. Considering the highest possible combat level a player could reach was 126, the Kafite Queen was menacing, and most players would only dare to fight her alongside a team. The Fight Caves, however, introduced a new monster, known as Jad who boasted a combat level of 702 and can only be fought by one player and the player alone. This monster was so powerful, it was capable of killing most players in a single hit. Fucking magic! No, I'm not dead! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! Fuck, dude! <sighs> but in order to even fight Jad, the player would first have to fight their way through 62 waves of monsters, with each wave becoming more difficult than the previous one. Bring Jad's HP down to zero, and the player will be awarded the Fire Cape. Not only does it look awesome to wear around, but doing so is a true testament to the player's skill. Upon release, very few players were able to overcome the insanely difficult challenge needed to obtain it. Fast forward to today, and some players still struggle to learn the mechanics of the Fight Caves and it is recommended to at least have a combat level of 80 before even attempting them. But what if I told you a small group of players ignored that recommendation and instead did the unthinkable? Before we begin, I'll do a quick rundown of what the fight caves are. There exist seven different monsters throughout the 63 waves. Each of these monsters has a different combat level as well as a different strategy to how they should be defeated. The Tiske, or Bat, is the first monster to spawn. It is the lowest level monster in the caves, with a combat level of 22. They don't deal much damage, and they are relatively easy to kill, but every hit from them drains your prayer. Prayer is a skill in RuneScape that provides players with various effects during combat, the most important effects being protection prayers. Monsters in RuneScape can damage the player by either using melee, ranged, or magic attacks. If a player activates the appropriate protection prayer, they can nullify any damage from that monster. Prayers will only last for a limited amount of time, however, since keeping them activated drains your prayer points. If your prayer points reach zero, you can no longer activate any prayers unless you drink a certain potion to restore them. As you'll find out, prayer is absolutely essential to surviving the fight caves. Thus, it's recommended to kill the bats as soon as the wave begins. The next monster is the Tiskek, or Blob. These creatures are slightly tougher than the bats, having 45 combat, and will inflict a tiny amount of recoil damage every time you attack them up close. When they die, two smaller blobs emerge and will attack the player until they are killed off. These monsters aren't overly threatening, but they can become a nuisance in the later waves. Up next is the Toxil, or ranged NPC, 
with a combat level of 90. These monsters attack at a rate of 4 ticks, or every 2.4 seconds, with a ranged attack. Their attacks can be hard to avoid, making them a high priority target to avoid losing too much HP. The Yeet Meshkot, or melee NPCs, begin appearing at wave 15. Fortunately, these monsters can only attack up close using melee, but they pack a punch being at level 180 combat. Run anywhere near them, and they can hit you for as high as 25 damage. Moreover, if you decide to fight them up close, which you shouldn't, they will begin to heal themselves or any nearby allies once they are under half HP. Once the player reaches wave 31, the Ketzek, or Mage NPCs, begin to spawn. These monsters have a combat level of 360, and can hit as high as a 54 if the player hasn't activated the Protect from Magic Prayer. They are also able to attack using melee if you get too close, giving the player yet another reason to opt to use ranged attacks throughout the entire fight caves. It would be very unwise to turn off prayer while these creatures are still around, so you better hope that the monsters you don't have protection against are killed off as soon as possible. Fortunately, the monsters in RuneScape aren't really that smart and have predictable behaviors that the player can exploit. For instance, monsters will always have to move to wherever the player is standing until they are within attack range when they are aggressive. They move pretty slowly and won't even walk around any obstacles if they get in the way of the monster's path. If the player can run behind certain obstacles, or even around the corner of a rock, then they can be safe from any of the monster's attacks. While using a ranged weapon, players can attack the monsters without even having to worry about any retaliation. This is called save spotting. The developers were gracious enough to include three prominent rock formations within the fight caves that can be used as save spots, and players have since named these rock formations. The final monster in the cave. His talk Jad spawns when all the other waves have been completed. Oh. His insanely high combat level allows him to hit up to a 97 with almost every attack. He will attack either using ranged or magic, switching between the styles at random, and can even attack with melee if the player is fighting up close. Once again, it is recommended to fight Jad with ranged attacks, so you only have to switch between two protection prayers. To know which style of attack Jad is going to do requires the players to learn his animation and the sound effects. To make the fight even more difficult, Jad will spawn 4 healers once his HP falls below 160. The healers need to be killed off as quickly as possible, since they can easily erase any progress the player has made towards defeating Jad but good luck trying to do that while paying attention to his attacks. A typical run of the fight caves takes over an hour and a half to successfully complete. Knowing the names of the accounts that have achieved every record above level 50 combat is almost impossible to uncover, so I'll start with a player who gained quite a bit of popularity a year after the fight caves were released. In November of 2006, a player by the name of UAEX uploaded a video of him defeating Jad on a level 47 account. It was already impressive for accounts with only level 1 defense to be equipping a fire cape, but to do so on a level 47 caught the attention of many people. UAEX didn't show the entire run of the fight caves, but we can look into this video and point out a few strategies that he used. His weapon of choice was the magic shortbow. It requires level 50 range to use, and was one of the most powerful ranged weapons at the time. The equipment that UAX is wearing provided bonuses to his ranged accuracy as well as the length of time he could keep his prayers active. By looking at his inventory, we can see a variety of potions that restore health and prayer as well as a combination of runes to cast the spell Blood Rush. Blood Rush is a magic attack that can hit up to 15 and heal the player 25% of whatever damage was inflicted upon the monster. This spell provided UAX with a much needed source of healing throughout the fight caves since he would take a lot of hits. Another strategy UAEX used is something known as prayer flicking. Prayer flicking involves activating a prayer and then quickly deactivating it so as not to drain any prayer points. If done with perfect timing, it can provide the player with an unlimited source of prayer points. The downside to this is that if the prayer is deactivated too quickly, they may not have any protection prayers up for the monster's attack, which can mean instant death when fighting Jad or even the mage NPCs. During the Jad fight, UAEX would attack the healers in between each of Jad's attacks. This is so he could avoid Jad's melee attack when he had to step in close enough to be able to reach the healers with his bow. There technically is a way to survive within Jad's melee range, 
but UAEX would have had to constantly keep his protection melee prayer up and switch to either the ranged or magic protection prayers depending on which attack animation Jad was using. And when you're so close to finishing the fight caves, you don't want to be adding any more complexity to the final fight. Playing it safe would pay off for UAEX, as he became the first person to beat the fight caves at such a low combat level. In February of 2007, UAEX trimmed off some combat levels by completing the fight caves with an account that only had 50 ranged, 43 prayer, and no magic levels on it. His weapon of choice was, once again, the magic shortbow. Having no magic levels meant that he no longer had the ability to cast Blood Rush, so UAX had to be much more careful with how much damage he was taking. His experience in completing the fight caves hundreds of other times, however, allowed him to overcome this challenge and lower his record by 5 combat levels. He even felt confident enough in his play to actually type in the game and taunt Jad during the final fight. Just three months later, UAEX took his magic shortbow method and brought it to one of its absolute limits by only getting the level 50 ranged requirement to wield it and no HP levels. He would have to first level up his ranged using a dwarf cannon, a weapon that earns ranged experience without gaining any hit points experience. Not only would he have one defense, but he would become an even bigger glass cannon in the fight caves starting with only 10 HP. What's crazier is that the only source of food he brought in with him was a stack of purple sweets. Seeing as the ranged NPCs can hit up to 13, UAEX would either have had to 1. resort to tick eating in order to survive the waves that contain both the rage and mage NPCs, or 2. switch prayers according to whichever monster was going to attack while also luring away any melee NPCs. Either way, understanding such mechanics so early into the game's history gave UAEX the ability to set some of the earliest known records for beating the fight caves at a low combat level. Now here's where I need to make an important distinction between RuneScape and Old School RuneScape. The gist of it is that two versions of RuneScape exist today. RuneScape, commonly referred to as RuneScape 3, is the main version of the game that Jagex has been developing and updating since 2001. RuneScape nowadays has an entirely different system of combat that was introduced in November of 2012. Many diehard fans of the game resented this new combat system, and some would even quit playing because of it. The developers looked to appease those who enjoyed the new combat system and those who wanted things back to the way they used to be. They found their answer in an old hard drive. Old School RuneScape is a backup of RuneScape's archived source code from August of 2007, similar to World of Warcraft Classic. Old School RuneScape was released in February of 2013 by popular demand. Many players got to re-experience the game in its more simplified version that most remembered fondly. I will be referring to Old School RuneScape for the rest of this video, since this version of the game has seen more impressive accomplishments in the fight caves over the past few years. A year and a half has passed since the release of Old School RuneScape, and many veterans of the game have since obtained fire capes once again. None of them, however, had attempted to beat UAX's record of 40 combat. Well, everybody except for one. Having been a fan of UAX's videos in the past, one player became inspired and would begin a personal quest to lower that record even further. In August of 2014, Randy Mento is the first player in Old School RuneScape to beat the fight caves on an account lower than 40 combat. Using range was still the ideal attack style, but there was no feasible way to improve on the magic shortbow method. Randy instead opted to use a mithril crossbow, which requires 36 range to wield. It has a much slower fire rate, but it hits fairly accurately. Another bonus is that the mithril crossbow can fire a special type of bolt, which has a 55% chance of poisoning the monster. This poison helped keep Randy's combat level lower since dealing poison damage on the monsters doesn't gain any combat experience. Similar to UAEX's videos, Randy's upload to YouTube only included the fight against Jad. The main difference during the fight was that the healers spawned behind Jad, so when Randy attacked each one to stop them from healing him, none of them could actually move past Jad to get to Randy. With Jad defeated, Old School RuneScape would see its first low combat fire cape record being set. 
Less than a week after setting the first record in old school RuneScape, Randy would beat the fight caves at a combat level of only 34. To do this, he utilized the same weapon but of a much lower tier, the Iron Crossbow, which requires only 26 range to wield. It's considerably weaker than a Mithril Crossbow, but here's how Randy got around it. All he had to do was bring the Mithril Crossbow with him in his inventory, and then equip it once he had gained enough range levels from fighting all the monsters wave by wave. Overall, it took Randy 6 hours to complete the fight caves on this account. Although no one in old school RuneScape was challenging his records, Randy continued to push himself and beat the fight caves at even lower combat levels. This run, done in December of 2014, was an optimized version of his previous run, netting him a lower combat record at level 33. Two weeks later, Randy would enter the fight caves at only level 20 range. He brought with him upgrades to his main weapon as he gained range levels. Throughout the run, he would upgrade to using a maple shortbow and then eventually to a mithril crossbow. To reach Jad, Randy was required to prayer flick perfectly for 10 hours, spending anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes battling with each mage NPC. Prayer flicking on RuneScape can be very risky when you're at the mercy of server lag, which is almost impossible to predict or deal with. Nonetheless, the challenge of reaching Jad was conquered and Randy would set yet another record. A few months had gone by, and for whatever reason, Randy returned to the fight caves for one last Hail Mary to his range strategy. He began the run using an Oak Shortbow, which required only level 5 range to equip, before eventually upgrading to the Maple Shortbow. He equipped Poison Arrows to inflict as much poison damage as possible, netting him less combat experience by the end of the run. Once again, it took hours of near-perfect play for Randy to fight wave after wave of monsters. The run had almost completely been lost. You see, when Jad was close to being killed, Randy misread the timing of one of his attacks and mistakenly activated the Protect from Range Prayer too early. Now it's common for players to make mistakes like these, especially towards the end of the fight caves, when the pressure is at its peak, but Jad is unforgiving and will punish anyone who isn't playing perfectly. Maybe it was because the run was being live streamed on Twitch. Maybe the gods of RuneScape were watching over him. Maybe the cosmetic hat he was wearing, which provided no bonuses whatsoever, actually had a hidden effect. We'll never know for sure, but by some crazy gift of RNG, Randy survived the hit and went on to set a new record. All the records up until this point have had two things in common. The accounts that completed the fight caves had 1 defense and also 4-3 prayer. The accounts were glass cannons that could output a decent amount of damage, but still required protection prayers to survive the mage NPCs and Jad. But what if there was a new method that didn't need protection prayers? The Serpentine Helm would be the key to this new method. It was an item introduced to Old School RuneScape in 2015. It had a passive effect which gave any monster a 1 in 6 chance of being envenomed if they attacked a player who was wearing the helmet. Envenoming the monster will damage it for 6 HP and inflict that damage again every 18 seconds, increasing the damage by 2 for each hit before capping at 20 damage. The Serpentine Helm allowed for players to damage and kill monsters without actually having to fight them. A pretty useful tool for players trying to beat the fight caves without gaining any combat experience. The only requirement for equipping the Serpentine Helm is having 75 defense, which puts the player's combat level in the 20s, depending on what their hit points level is. The strategy for this new item was centered around tanking the attacks from each monster, hoping that they would become envenomed, and then hiding around safe spots to wait for them to die. Now, having a high defense was beneficial for tanking the melee and ranged attacks, but the level 360s would absolutely destroy Randy with their magic attacks, since magic in runescapes hits through conventional armor and defense. Considering Randy began the run with 25 HP and had no protection prayers, how is he going to survive the 33 Kedzak, as well as Jad? The answer was by tick eating. RuneScape doesn't quantify its unit of time in frames per second, but instead by game ticks. Every game tick is 0.6 seconds, and any action that requires processing from the online server such as eating, attacking, and even walking is governed by this value. 
Projectile attacks, including most ranged and magic attacks, have specific timings based on game ticks for determining how much damage will be inflicted from the projectile and when that projectile will actually lower the player's HP. Players have found out that replenishing their health via potions or food in the small window of time after damage has been calculated, but before it is inflicted on the player, can prevent their HP from reaching zero and thereby preventing death. For example, let's say I'm at 7 HP and the mage NPC fires its projectile. The server recognizes that my HP is 7 and calculates that the NPC will hit a 7. It will take some time for that projectile to actually hit the player, depending on how far away the NPC was. This gap provides players with just enough time to replenish health before the tick when the projectile reaches the player and damages them for 7 HP. In other words, the end result is that the player heals just above the calculated hit before that hit damages the player's HP and puts it at zero. An important thing to note is that there is no delay for when melee attacks damage the player, meaning you cannot take eat monsters attacking with melee. The problem is, with as few as 28 inventory spaces, Randy can't fit enough food or potions to take eat the literal thousands of attacks he must do in order to get through the fight caves. Well, all except one type of food. Purple sweets are rare, stackable food items that randomly heal anywhere between 1 to 3 HP when eaten. You can stack over 2 billion of these in a single inventory spot, providing a constant source of food for tick eating. They come at a high price though, costing Randy millions of endgame gold for tick eating his way to Jad. When you eat an item in RuneScape, there is a 3 tick or 1.8 second cooldown period where you cannot eat again. There are some exceptions to this, which I'll explain later, but the important thing is you can only tick eat one monster's attack at a time if you're using the same source of food. This means that Randy has to be very careful with which monsters will be attacking him in a given wave. Like most monsters in RuneScape, the NPCs in the fight cave spawn seemingly out of thin air rather than entering through the cave or by crawling out from the lava. Monsters in the fight caves will spawn in five different locations. In the center, in the northwest, in the southwest, in the south, and in the southeast. Only a small group of players knew this at the time, but Old School RuneScape uses an algorithm to determine which of these locations each monster will spawn. The properties for this algorithm are as follows. The highest combat level monster spawns at the starting point. The rest of the monsters spawn in descending combat level order according to a designated pattern as represented by this image. After each wave, the starting point shifts forward by one spawn point on the map. As an example, in wave 11, a level 90, a level 45, and a level 22 spawn. For this particular rotation, the level 90 spawns in the center, and the level 45 spawns in the southeast, and the level 22 spawns in the southwest. By wave 12, a level 90, a level 45, and two level 22s will spawn. The level 90 will spawn in the southeast, and the level 45 will spawn in the southwest, the first level 22 will spawn in the south, and the other level 22 will spawn in the northwest. By paying attention to which part of the map the NPCs spawn, Rennie can determine exactly where every monster, including Jad, will spawn in as early as the first two waves. Using this knowledge, Rennie can preemptively position his character in a spot where you can safely lure certain NPCs behind the rocks or simply have the NPC spawn on the other side of the rock from him, thereby allowing him to have to only take eat one monster at a time. As you can see, an enormous amount of planning went into making this run possible, and through hours of tick eating and waiting for the monsters to die from venom, Randy was able to obtain a fire cape at level 25 combat. Another year and a half had passed, and Randy's 25 combat record stood, but something significant was about to happen. In May of 2017, the developers nerfed the Serpentine Helm so that it would no longer envenom monsters if they attacked the player. Instead, the player would have to damage the monster with a melee attack in order to envenom it. After this update, players could no longer use the Serpentine Helm slash tick eating method to obtain a fire cape since you cannot tick eat melee attacks. More months would pass by, and it seemed as if Rendy's level 25 combat fire cape was unbeatable. That is, until a player by the name of Kemq came along.